I'm here to talk about dealing with unexpected responsibility um, and how I've kind of fallen into that, the different roles that I've done and what that means as a, a 27 year old change maker. So I am Sri Atchison, I'm 27. I was adopted from Sri Lanka when I was three weeks old by an amazing Irish couple. I was raised in Tyrone up north, um, so rural Ireland really. Um, I am listed as one of the UK's most influential women in tech. Um, I am also a Deloitte consultant, and I was most recently just promoted at Women Who Code to be a board-appointed global ambassador. So, <laughs> thanks very much. <laughs> um, so, I, my work with Women Who Code, I started that when I was 22, um, when I graduated from Queen's University Belfast with a computer science degree, became an engineer, um, and here I am now. With Women Who Code, um, we are the largest non-profit globally dedicated to eradicating the gender bias in the tech industry. We have 137,000 members globally, and we last year we gave away, sorry, 2.7 million scholarship, dollars scholarship to women in technology. We have run over 7,000 events globally, and we are in over 60 cities with a 55 city wait list. Um, women Who Code, we are here to create a space for women to know that firstly, you are not alone. Secondly, we are here to provide the skill sets that women need to flourish in the tech industry. Um, what I do with Women Who Code when I started um, five years ago, so I, I launched Belfast, I then launched London and Bristol. I became the UK expansion director, so I oversaw the UK outreach, created sponsorships and partnerships. We actually have two of our leaders here today. We have our Women Who Code Dublin director, um, Vicky, who's here somewhere. There she is. Um, go, Vicky. Yep. <laughs> um, but we also have our Women Who Code Belfast director, Claire here, who came with me. Where, where is Claire? There's Claire. So both of these women, if you want to learn about what we're doing in Ireland with Women Who Code, um, in both Belfast and Vicky, hop over and talk to them after. Um, so yes, I started those different organizations. Um, I, I created that really from scratch. That started at zero and at 22. Um, people don't listen to 22 year olds when they come out of university and want to change the world. Um, but I kind of, said a few swear words and moved on. Um, and we've been very successful. I am, we have over 8,000 women now across the UK, across these branches. So Belfast, Bristol, London and Edinburgh, and then obviously Dublin down here, who's not in the UK. But um, we are doing some fantastic work. Um, women Who Code has given me a platform. I speak at conferences all over the world, at leading conferences. I've spoken, um, like Anne said, I've spoken here before. I've spoken at the World Economic Forum in Davos, um, um, conferences in San Francisco, in Cannes. Just yesterday, I was speaking at a conference in Brussels. To, uh, Monday, I'm speaking in, in Bulgaria, and then Utah shortly after, and then Bucharest. So um, I'm very proud and, firstly, very privileged to be in the position that I am today. Um, I am, um, um, like I said, I was adopted when I was three weeks old. And this is a very different session from what I usually talk about. I talk a lot about, you know, diversity, inclusion, future of work. Um, but Anne wanted me to talk about sort of my background and, and where I've kind of got to with that. So it's a bit more personal and almost a wee bit emotional if I'm being honest, because it is so different. Um, but again, I have, I created a platform for myself. I, I used personal branding. I worked stupidly hard over the last five years um, to get where I am, to be able to firstly get a job at, at Deloitte, which is one of the big four, as a technical business consultant, which was my dream job. Um, I used to be a developer. I wanted to pivot, though. I pivoted because I loved working with people, and I wanted to be the middleman between clients and developers. Um, but again, I got a reputation. I've, I've won loads of awards, and I'm so privileged and proud to have won those awards as someone who could have um, possibly not even been alive right now, if I'm being honest, if I had have stayed or not been adopted or put up for adoption. Um, so fast forward till last year, so me and my husband got married um, and we went to Sri Lanka on um, our honeymoon. So I'd been to Sri Lanka two or three times when I was growing up, um, but don't really remember it. It's not something that you remember when you know seven and 11. Um, but we went back and um, what I actually thought was when I went back, I went back to one of the areas called Candy, which is a cool name for a place, right? Um, and I, on my birth certificate, it says that's, that's where I'm from. So got emotional and um, was very surreal being in a place where, you know, I was born sort of not too far away from there. Um, so we decided, you know, let's see what we can do. Let's see if 
I could maybe find my biological birth mother. And now, the first point of that is, this was not because I ever had any void. Like, as you, I've said, I'm extremely privileged. I have had a fantastic upbringing in Ireland and from the two parents that I have who have given me absolutely everything. If anything, I would say I was a bit spoiled, probably too spoiled, um, because I did have everything because they worked so hard to give me and my brother, who was also adopted from Sri Lanka. Um, but again, that's being able to give, go to university, get the platform I have now, People listen to me now, thankfully. I've worked so hard for people to listen to me. Um, so through a colleague, I contacted the, the largest, basically the equivalent of BBC in Sri Lanka, um, called News First, and told them my story. They asked for my CV, which is the most bizarre thing. It was like, I'm trying to find a birth mother here and not want a job. But I sent them my CV, and they were like, oh, we love this story. You know, it's someone who's left Sri Lanka, came back successful. We would love to try and help you. So purse comes to shove, turns out every single piece of information on my birth certificate is a lie, all wrong, no chance there. Um, also turns out my Twitter handle is at Nirashika, so that's my Sri Lankan birth, birth name, so my mum and dad kept that middle name for me. Turns out I've been spelling it wrong for 27 years, that's not even how you spell it. Um, so that's embarrassing, but again, it's in my emails, it's on my um, business cards and everything else, so it's staying that way now, it's too late. Um, but they, they helped me start searching. We went com the story went completely viral. So I was on front of newspapers. I was on primetime news for weeks on end. And I was on all the radio, everything like that. Um, and basically, we, got, we had a, a lot of trouble, a lot of people pretending to be my birth mother and everything else. So very, very lucky that my mom and dad at the time took four potato quality pictures um, of my birth mother and my brother's birth mother holding me and my brother. And um, she looks just like me. So that was the kind of the, the kickoff for So when I was put up for adoption, she was around 25 to 20, I think 25. Um, so relatively the same age as me now, but she like looked like, a, I have a picture coming up and it almost looks like an Instagram filtered picture of me. Um, so that's where the interest came out of. But thankfully she still looks bloody identical to what she looked like back then, only like a, a lot older, but you can tell it's her. And an army man happened to see her photo on the news, purely coincidental, and recognized her um, from this very small village, which actually wasn't even the place that I thought I was from when I was getting emotional, so that was for no reason too. Um, <laughs> ridiculous. Um, but we found her, um, which was absolutely crazy. So we did DNA results and everything. I don't even think we needed DNA results, really, if I'm being honest, and you'll see why in a second. Um, but we found her, um, and we went out and we met her, and it was incredibly, I get emotional, I don't ever get emotional when I speak at conferences, but um, it was incredible. Um, oh, I didn't want to do this. <laughs> that bloody picture. <laughs> um, so like I said, she, she looks just like me, or I'd look just like her, sorry. Um, so we met her, my husband was with me. Um, it was one of the most, unbelievable experiences because she is a stranger, I don't know her, but um, there's still this very bizarre connection when you, when you meet someone, um, someone like that that looks just like you. <laughs> um, now, as you can imagine, in rural Ireland, there's not many Sri Lankans, so I've had most of my life where nobody looks like me, and then, holy God, here we go, here's somebody who looks just like me. So that's the picture I'm talking about. This was the first one the news station sent me, and I was like, did they get that picture off Instagram of me and just put a filter on it? It looks exactly like me. Um, the middle picture, I love this middle picture. So we, this wasn't intentional, but the day before we left, we all went down to dinner and everything. And we were like matching and I was like, how cool is this? We're even matching now too. Um, but one of the things that I love, um, that's my husband um, up in the top corner with her as well. Um, and he makes her look so tiny because he's like six foot three and she's this wee tiny woman. Um, but this is one of those things where I have all this responsibility with women who code. I get messages every single day of women and men telling me I've inspired them, I've changed their lives, I've given them the kick to you know, maybe do computer science or pursue something technical or even something entirely different just to have a drive um, for that kind of thing. And this was something I never expected was for the same thing to happen in Sri Lanka. Um, oh, and so it turns out I have a, a half sister as well. 
um, and that's her up in the top corner. And I love that picture. So I was walking um, down the pathway where they live in the village and um, I almost fell because I'm stupidly clumsy. And she went and grabbed my hand and said that um, she, oh, <laughs> um, she wanted to hold my hand now because she never had the opportunity to whenever um, we were growing up because we obviously were on opposite ends of the world. And this was the kind of thing where I was just thrown into this role of responsibility. Like when I walked down the street in Sri Lanka, like I've been in magazines here, I've been in like Marie Claire and Huffington Post and Wired and everything else. But when I walked down the street in Sri Lanka, people are like, oh my God, it's Sheree Atchison, let me get a picture. They run up to me, they want me to like get selfies with them and everything else. It's very, very bizarre and kind of weird, but very, very cool. But it was one of those things where it was like, all of the work I do, like we, we can't, as with women who code, like representation matters. We can't continually, you know, talk about diversity and hire diversity, but only promote conformity. We can't have that anymore. It doesn't work. It doesn't play a ball. And I am not here to mess around. I'm not here to have everybody look the same, which is why I love InspireFest, because we all look so different. Uh, but we, that led to this massive, crazy stuff happening in Sri Lanka. So the top, the top picture there, um, I wish I looked like that every day, I don't. Um, but that's the largest magazine in Sri Lanka and I was a cover story. So people were starting to send me all these messages on Instagram where like, I'm on the shelf in this wee shop in like Jaffna and it's Sheree Atchison on the cover and I'm like, I'm from bloody rural Ireland, what's going on? This is my favorite picture, this middle one here. So this young girl messaged me um, on Twitter and was like, can you follow me, I wanna, I wanna DM you. And I was like, okay, sure, sure. Um, so I talked to her mum and everything first to make sure that it was okay. And she was like, I had to talk about my person that I, my most inspired person in the world for my year 11 test. And I was like, oh, that's fantastic. And she was like, I talked about you. And I was like, that is absolutely crazy. And very, very, very humbling. Like you can see she lives in rural Sri Lanka. And she was like, I printed out my two favorite photos of you and brought them to school. And she printed out photos of me to go and talk about what she wants to do. She wants to be in STEM. Yes, she wants to be a developer. Um, but those kinds of things, um, just absolutely crazy levels of responsibility that I didn't expect. Um, the next one was whenever I arrived at the airport, so Sri Lankan Airlines all greeted me with like flowers. I had a massive news team. People that knew I was coming back to Sri Lanka were queued up to like take pictures with me. And this is what I mean. There's this level of responsibility that you do not expect. I was over there for personal reasons, um, but everything kind of changed. It came a work trip very, very quickly. Um, the next one is I, w I did some guest lecturing at the leading technology university out there because I love technology. I love inspiring people. I love f forcing change, really. Um, but people were queuing outside of the university to get in. Um, there are people sitting on the floor to listen to me. And like, again, I speak at conferences all over the world and I'm very, very proud to be able to do that. But it's still incredibly bizarre when you go halfway around the world and people are inspired and really dedicated to hear what you're saying. And the inspirational series one is, so I get a lot of messages from different schools and, and young um, children. And there was an orphanage um, in Sri Lanka. Um, which has around um, 20 to 30 children-ish. And they also have the, the, it's like the wise school. So it's basically to help children that are underprivileged to learn English, to learn how to read and write in English, so as they're not underprivileged anymore. And I got a message from the founder of that saying, we have um, loads of children here who um, absolutely love the work that you do and we would love if you would talk to them. So obviously I couldn't get over. <laughs> so um, I Skyped in and just, the absolute awe of these people sitting listening to me um, and me telling them about women who code, about the work that I do, about like the fact that I was adopted and I've had all of the benefits of the Western world. Um, I have actively changed technology across the UK because I have worked really hard and because there are great people in the local women who code teams that work stupidly hard also. Um, but again, that led again to this unexpected responsibility and this weird fame which I was like, I have to do something with this. I can't sit down and just you know, leave it at that. So I founded a social responsibility project back in Sri Lanka called I Am Lanka. I Am Lanka is a, a movement to highlight and showcase local role models from Sri Lanka. And this is the same reason why I brought Women Who Code to the UK five years ago, especially for Belfast, because Belfast had a real problem with always looking away for role models. Even though there are so many unreal things happening back home, 
people were very focused on what's happening in London and San Francisco and wherever else, but what about the people that look like you, that sound like you, that are from similar backgrounds, similar areas? Those people are important. Those are the people I want to share stories for. And I Am Lankit does just that. So I talk to um, people that are of Sri Lankan origin that do great things, whether they're in STEM, whether they are CEOs or chairmen of hotel chains, all of these different people, nurses, doctors, lawyers, me. Um, and we've reached a lot of people. We've reached around 300,000 people, um, liked over 40,000 times, um, and our role model videos have been viewed over 91,000 times. We're a movement. People come to us now to be showcased. People have I am I have like I am an I am like a showcase on their CV now. That's how big of a thing that it's became. And that's why when I had this unexpected responsibility, I had to do something. I had to give something back. At the end of the day, I'm not from Sri Lanka, really. I'm from I'm from Cull Island in Tyrone. Um, but there is an attachment there. Um, if the if my birth mother had never been selfless enough to give me up for adoption, I would not have had the life I had. My parents wouldn't have had the the greatest gift that they expect. I don't know if I'm a great gift, but I'll say that anyway. Um, and I wouldn't have had that only for that country, so I had to do something to give something back. Um, and for me, really, this was about about the tech in the tech industry at the crux of everything because we can't. The tech industry has. The tech industry is so diverse, it's so fluid, it's so unique, and we have to embrace diversity in technology because the tech industry does not have one face. We are all races, we are all genders, we are all religions, we are everything. And for that reason, dealing with unexpected responsibility and representation matters. And just before I finish, the one thing about this picture is, so I spoke at the Women Who Code flagship conference in San Francisco this year, which was fantastic at Twitter's HQ. Um, but this picture that I'm, in front of a picture of a picture. Um, that's when I spoke at Inspirefest the last time, and Women Who Code love that picture. It's in every single PR piece of material we have. Clearly, I really like check dresses at Inspirefest. I just realized. <laughs> but um, representation matters, and it's so important because I need to see people that look like me. I need to see people that don't look like me, too. I need to see people that sound like me, hopefully not with the same accent. Maybe that might make too good but we need people of all different walks of life and we need people to stand up and make a change for those people. If you have any questions, I will be about after and thank you very much. <laughs>